Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. Well, this thing came out a lot sooner than I was expecting. It's the new Lizzie Hale Signature Explorer Firebird Mix that they appropriately named the Explorer Bird. So while we're unboxing this, let's do a little bit of history. So Lizzie Hale is part of the group Hailstorm. She's actually had many a different signature guitars with Gibson before, starting all the way back in 2014 with her white Explorer Custom, essentially. It had a matching white headstock, white body. That's one of my favorite Explorers to exist. But then four years later, in late 2018, 2019, they came out with her Dark Explorer, which was essentially the white one again, but in black format. That was also cool, but unfortunately, a lot of those were not well-crafted instruments, as far as nitty-gritty quality control things are. So it seems about every four years, Gibson will give her a signature guitar, because she is the first female brand ambassador. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Hey, what about Joan Jett? She's had a signature guitar before. Cheryl Crow, ever heard of her? Well, brand ambassadors are apparently a little bit different. Like, it wasn't that long ago that Gibson named Slash their global brand ambassador. So it's a little bit different from a signature guitar artist. It's more so, hey, we're going to stick with this person till the end. So whether you know of the band or not, I think we can all agree, Lizzie sure does know how to spec out some really cool looking guitars. So here we go. After a three or four year wait, it's not what I was hoping it was going to be. I mean, come on. Lizzie Gibson, please still do the Golden Baritone Explorer, but this thing is cool in its own rights, too. Let's check out the Explorer Bird. Oh my, that is very, very vibrant. I'm gonna have to say, the stock photos do not do these things justice. Like, I figured this would be a very bright red finish, but, I mean, this is a little bit above and beyond, I think. I mean, they call it cardinal red, so it's supposed to be very striking. But the fretboard never really did too much for me in the stock photos, but in person, it pops a little bit better because what you're seeing here are actual yellow inlays on here. It's not like aged yellow. They just actually made them like a reflective mirror material, essentially. Then they have a yellow material over top of that. And unfortunately, there's no body binding this time, so it's not really a red Explorer custom. It's just a regular Explorer. But there is black binding on the edges of the fretboard in case you missed that. That's a little bit hard to see. And yeah, you guys also see that golden fret wire. I did not know to expect that again. But we have not seen gold frets on a stock Gibson guitar recently in a while. But there we go. Non-reverse Firebird headstock on here. Take the longest Gibson body shape, the Explorer, throw the longest headstock on it, and that is why, my friends, this thing has to sit at a strange angle in the case, because otherwise it would have had to have been even ridiculously larger of a case than it already is. But the case itself actually feels pretty good. I'm impressed with that. It's similar to the newer Les Paul ones, but the interior is quite nice. You get a big pocket here, but you only get that because they need all the other space for this headstock. The price on these is $2,799. To be honest, I find these a fantastic deal brand new. They probably could have priced them at $35 and still sold them. So definitely pick these up while you still can. However, Cesar on Instagram said these are not a limited edition. So these might be in production for a little bit longer. And over the two years that they were designing this and testing it, she also had a white one. So maybe we'll see some other colors in the future. There's been a little bit of controversy online behind these. Some people don't necessarily like the design. And I'll be honest, it wasn't my favorite at first either. But it's new. It's Lizzie Hale's signature. It adds to all the guitars. So I like it in that aspect. But please, once again, I'm asking you, Gibbs and Lizzie, please still, still, still do the Baritone Explorer. That'll make me very happy. But besides our cool gold baritone explorer, check out our white double neck that has white matching headstocks and the gold pick guard. That'd be kind of cool to see too, but I don't think we need another run of white double neck signature guitars. Life Sin and Felder have already got us covered on those. Oh, and don't forget her Epiphone version of the white one they also did. But first impressions out of the way, let's see what kind of case candy do we get with this? Ah, this is something new. The original shipping tag. Normally these are on the original box. I did see one on there, so maybe now they're printing a second one here. I like that. We've got some case keys here, the usual Gibson strap here if you want to use it. Our updated Gibson tiny warranty information pamphlet and pre-packed checklist. Blurry out of focus and dark baby photo. These things are so big they can't even fit them in the shot. And it looks like all our other regular stuff. Polished cloth, owner's manual, Gibson multi-tool, good stuff. But before we throw this one on the workbench, let's hear a word from our sponsor today, Sweetwater. 
Sweetwater is the premier place to buy your gear. In fact, that's where I bought this one. I was lucky enough to get one of their first batches in stock here. But this review is not sponsored, just the episode in general. So, whether you need an electric guitar, you need some cables, you need some strings, or if you need a whole new studio setup, or you just need to rent their studio space, Sweetwater's got all this stuff for you. They've even got music lessons, if you happen to be local to the Fort Wayne, Indiana area. And hey, Gear Fest is coming up too, so it might be worth a trip down there for all those exclusive deals. So show them some love. I've got a link in the description. You can sign up for their giveaways and support the show at the same time. Thank you to Sweetwater for sponsoring tonight's episode. And now, let's throw this thing on the workbench and take an inside look at its parts and specs. inside the new Explorer Bird. So there's actually a few things that you don't notice until you've had the guitar for a while, but we'll get to that in a second. So pickup cavities. Here's what they look like. Starting to get a little bit sloppy looking in my opinion. Like the bridge pickup cavity is not too bad, but this one we've got some splinters over here and it's just a, a little bit rough. It doesn't matter, no, but it's attention to detail stuff. So we do have a long neck tendon in here. And it looks like it says DSXLZ. So that has something to do with Lizzie Hale Explorer Bird. But take a look at the pickups themselves. So this is very similar to the 70s Explorer because we've got the same style pickups in here. We've got the rhythm 70s in the neck and the lead 70s in the bridge. However, look at the pickups. Do you see anything that's different about these? Not only do we have the golden screws, we've got the golden slug coils here too. Normally, for whatever reason, gold pickups don't do that. They just leave that the chrome or nickel or whatever they're using. So the fact that those are double gold is a special feature of this guitar. So hey, if you ever run into a 70s tribute humbucker and it's all gold like this, you know what it originally belonged to. But just to be clear here, like Dirty Fingers pickups, they have a double row of adjustable pole pieces. That's why those would be all gold, but not usually ones with the slug coils. But these are pretty hot, just like Dirty Fingers. 14 15.55k ohms in the bridge, and an even hotter 15.13 in the neck, with a middle position of 7.56. But now we move on to the hardware. No locking tone pros this time. We have lightweight aluminum parts. So this is the regular Nashville style bridge made by Advanced Plating Incorporated. It utilizes the special posts that let you use an Allen key that you can find within the Gibson multi-tool that they give you in the case so you don't even have to use the thumb wheels so you can save your thumbs some trauma when you're setting up the action if you have strings on it. And the tailpiece is made of the same lightweight material, Advanced Plating Incorporated as well. So now our pick guard, it is multi-ply. So we've got a black, white, black, white, black layer. And underneath there, you just get your regular stuff here as far as the wrap goes. Looks like I've got a pretty rough spot right here in the wood. Very similar to what you found in the pickup cavities. And note the gold skirt right here. That definitely helps pop against the black pick guard. So nothing too fancy as far as that goes. And then your knobs, they're just your regular speed knobs with white lettering. You've got two volumes and a master tone. And we'll take a once over around the body. Nothing too much to say. There's no fancy comfort carves, no binding or anything like that. They kind of scaled this model back a little bit. I'm wondering if they did that so they could keep the price point a little bit lower because the price of this is not all that different from the other explorers that were within her lineup. And they usually have a pretty good history of increasing in value as the years go on. I guess it really just depends how many of these things they make. As I was telling you earlier, Cesar said there's no set number, but they're only gonna make so many because there's only so much demand for or a freak of a guitar like this, as lovely as a freak as it is. We've got our output jack here on the side. I just want to note that is the tightest jack I have had in a long time. Like it's obnoxiously tight. You can hardly get your lead in and out. And then kind of a QC thing right here. You can see this like smudge line right here. That's an area where it feels like the finish just didn't get buffed all the way because it's a little bit more flat. And I was ready to give them the benefit of the doubt saying, okay, maybe it's this part of the case. It's like rubbing and shipping or something, but it's right here and it doesn't really line up with anything in the case. So I think that's a factory boo-boo on that one. That's not that noticeable from afar. So moving on from our mahogany body, we've got a regular mahogany neck with a rosewood fretboard this time, Indian rosewood to be exact. And let's just take a second to appreciate these medium jumbo frets and the inlays. So they just said they were acrylic inlays on the spec sheet, so I wasn't expecting the whole mirror reflectiveness. That's really cool. I like that they did something a 
a little bit fancy and special with those. I bet those look great on stage. Like it's got a pretty cool side profile view. You get that nice dark red rosewood color, then black and red, and then you get the yellow kind of mixed in between. So that's kind of what it looks like when you're playing it. Now let's be fair here. Black binding is really tough to not show tooling marks on. So far it's better than the Dark Explorer that they did, but you can definitely still see all the tooling marks on this. But nothing that I would consider like too egregious at this point in time. On this example anyways, your results may vary but you do still have the white side marker inlays. So you get a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white. And you also have a black nut and that measures 1.72 inches. Wow, that's rather wide. And then by the 12th, 2.11. First fret neck depth for rocking 0.87 and an even one at the 12th fret. Oh, and somebody asked to start measuring frets. So it's about 0.049 for the height of the frets. And it's your regular 24 and three quarter inch scale length with the usual 12 inch fretboard radius. Here it is at the first fret and the 12th fret. It's a nice wide C shape, not quite to like 61 SG reissue size though. Despite it looking quite wide, it doesn't really feel all that wide because it's got the roundedness to the back. Now, if that was a little bit flatter, then we'd be closer to that really thin SG neck. QC wise, this nut looks kind of ugly, but it was installed correctly. It's just lacquer lines, a little bit of lifting and all that just makes it not look as good as it could have. The treble side turned out a little bit better. So now we move on to the headstock. Keep in mind, this is an artist signature guitar. She designed it the way she wanted it to. A lot of people are upset that they call this the Explorer Bird when it's really just an Explorer with the non-reverse Firebird headstock on it. I think what a lot of people wanted this thing to be is a neck through Explorer that has the reverse headstock on it, that has the banjo tuners, you know, kind of similar to the Joe Bonamassa signature that we had reviewed, the Bonna Bird. That would be insanely cool to see. But the only thing I'm gonna nitpick here is the Gibson logo. It's a boring silk screen. Had they had done this effect on the logo, oh yeah, that would have just completely transformed this. But it is what it is. It's an interesting guitar. But the truss rod cover is multi-ply. It looks like it has Lizzie Hale's signature on it. LZZ. And the truss rod looks like this. All red over. And the blinging mini Grover tuner sticking off the side here. Moving on to the backside. Not too much to talk about here. Again, no fancy comfort cuts. It's just your regular Explorer for the most part. And inside the electronics control cavity, you get three Gibson branded pots with a orange drop capacitor. But the strap buttons that come stock are the large ones. This is kind of a mix between a strap lock and a regular one. A larger dome helps keep your strap on, but it is not an official strap lock. But now the backside of the headstock. Made in USA, easy to read, it's there always apparent no matter what angle you're at for the most part. Now the serial number, that's a little bit of a different story. Kind of have to get it in the light to read it. And even then it's a little bit tricky, but it looks like maybe 2092-0125. So that makes it a 2022 model, 90th day of the year, 125th batch number. But the unique thing about this finish, if you look at it at the right angle, you can actually see the seam line. So there's one of the seam lines on the headstock. I think we should see another one right here and that's also true on the body but to a slightly lesser extent this isn't going to show on camera but you can see there's definitely a seam line right here if you're really looking for it it's not as apparent as the headstock is and yes you can see all the wood grain underneath the finish and everything too so if you don't like that don't get it but if you don't mind because it adds character to it yeah well there's the back of the mini grovers so these are there because obviously they're the right size and they don't weigh too much so this way you don't get like a heavy neck divey instrument and they're more regular tuners rather than going banjo style it all comes down to personal preference and this one's lizzie's because you also have to think if they would have went banjo style they would have had to have taken an already thick case and make it about an inch or two thicker in order for the headstock not to touch down. So maybe she'll get a custom shop release that has something else a little bit crazy too. Being a brand ambassador, it doesn't seem like her signature guitars are ever gonna stop. Maybe we'll just get some every, you know, three or four years. All said and done, this particular one weighs eight pounds, 13 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how this one sounds. Let's go ahead and run through these. Remember, these are extremely hot pickups. It's unlike her other signature guitars. So that's what's nice is if you already have the other ones, this is a completely different beast. However, I've never really liked high output pickups that much myself. I prefer more like PAF style, like her old ones. So I'm gonna do my best to demo this. 
Start with our clean tones. I'm gonna roll it down probably about to an eight and a half here. like the middle position on this guitar. We'll roll it down a bit now to a five. That's about the spot where you can play it like a regular PAF style guitar without worrying of overdriving your amp there. Then full on blast 10. Try it with some dirt. Now that we know all about the new Lizzie Hale Signature Explorer Bird, what are my final thoughts on this thing? 
I, I just didn't really like it that much. I enjoy the whole idea behind mixing Gibson shapes together and having weird firebirds, but I feel like this is not quite its final form yet. Like they're holding back on us. Like they we're gonna get some really cool weird custom shop in a couple of months. I know that'd be fun. But I do really like the fact that Lizzie continues to get to design these interesting guitars because it is part of a set. There's two other guitars within the Gibson realm that we learned about, and this looks great with that, and it's a whole new take. So for that, definitely love it. However, I'm just not much of a hot pickup guy. So I'd probably like this a little bit better if I had like some 57 classics in here but I'm definitely glad I got this guitar to check out because it's got a lot of unique attributes to it, like these inlays. It's strange when you're playing this, the reflections of your inlays actually kind of reflect on the strings. So it's like your dots are raised. That's kind of an interesting effect. I could see how that could be beneficial on stage. It's definitely a shocking finish and it's got its own thing going on. And all things considered, I think they've priced these things very appropriately. They could have been done a lot worse, but at the time of release, it doesn't seem like these are ultra limited edition but only time will tell how many get made. A few other QC things I noticed. There's a little bump right here in the finish. I know it doesn't seem that big, but when you're playing, it just stands out because it's right on the corner. It catches the light. It's like, ah, no. And obviously that little buff area that we were talking about here. So troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed checking it out with me nonetheless, and we will catch you guys tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.